How you doing? Brethren, non brethren, this is Biblical Science with Manuel Fernandez. Uh, for those who don't think I know what my name means, my name means Emmanuel, God is with us, and he surely is. Praise God. That's the God name me, not my parents. This is not by accident, there's no quinky dink. Are there other people in Emmanuel? I'm not saying other people call Emmanuel, I say, but what a quinky dink coincidence. Uh, um, my name is Emmanuel, that means God is with us, he surely is. Praise God, hallelujah, Lord use. This one is about the checklist that's in your Bible. The, the judgments that God judges Christians specifically. Remember, God's not the author of confusion for your reward, not your salvation. For rewards. Ray told one of them rewards for those in the love is appearing. Pre tribbers, mid tribbers, you're out of your reward, and God will chasten you severely for taking the crown out of the people that were pre tribbers and you swayed them over to made a post trip. Remember, the devil don't care if you save anything to make your life miserable. If he costs you a crown, the devil will do that. The devil could care less. Uh, uh, he prefer you not being saved, but don't think, oh, oh he's saved me. Leave him alone. No, the devil comes at you with everything he got. Every Your life should be harder, harsher after saved than before saved. Right? Before salvation, it was great. Had a car, Honda Accord. Got a house and car in the same year, 2009. Life is good. Fornication with girls. Worshiping football. That was before salvation. Now all that's gone. I'm still holding up. I'm still a be a good will, be a good cheer. It's it's not a sin for, to be depressed. We live in a depressed world. Don't sit there and say it's because yeah, down sometimes, but the Lord picks me up. This is the person in the Bible that says when you when you're down, the God will pick you up. Now wait for you to pick get picked up. Remember, you you, you what most people don't see is you can be 80 years old, 90 years old, 100 years old. God still sees you as a little three-year-old if you're saved. You're his children. Adopted child of God. You need to talk to God the Father and look as God the Father as your father here on earth. Why do you think he wants you to have kids? You think that's by accident? I mean, I don't have a family now. The Lord didn't put in my heart to put on a family. I guess God, remember God's timing, God's providence. He's never too late. He's never too early. His way is perfect. What? Why do you think he wants you to have a family? To know how you, to know how you experience how you labor with your child is how you experience your labors with you. The trust in God you need to have is the same way your son trusts you when you throw him in the air. He knows you're gonna pick him up. That's trust. He's laugh. Is he crying? He's laughing. Well, I hope he's laughing. I used to do that with my God on the cut. I throw him up. They trust me. I'm gonna hold him. Pick him. That's the trust you need in God. If if you don't have that trust in God. I'm not saying that you're not saved, but you're weak in your Christian walk. I'm not, I'm not going to lie and say I'm there yet, but I'm there and there. My trust is, you need to know God's control. Okay? Where everything is happening is, God is in control. Period. You can go to question.org. That side I was talking about, like I said, I don't agree with it fully because it has some things I don't, uh, don't like. But uh, it's right on the spot when it says God is in control and how he's in control and his providence. He's in control. Okay? I'm not dying unless he says so. Remember I told you I was suicidal? Well, if it's not your time, he's going to make that gun misfire. He's going to make something happen. You're not going until he says you're going. That's the control he has. You're not going nowhere. I don't know how many times I could have died. I could have had, when I was a kid, car sped like this. I mean, really quick, I could have died right there. I believe, in, uh, remember I talked about preser preser preservation, uh, I didn't talk about Calvinism. I guess I can talk about am I Calvinism, five point Calvinism, because uh, that's a good topic. I'm glad I thought of that. I'll talk about Calvinism. Calvinism can't even talk. Be doing this all day. Calvinism next, and hyper. I'm not a hyper Calvinist. I'm a Calvinist. I'll tell you the differences. I'll lay. I'll break it all down. Don't worry about it. Uh, could have died many times. Many times I could have died. God says you preserve His elect. You're not. You're basically physically immoral until you get saved. That's for his elect. Uh, we suffer for the elect's sake. Christ died for his elect. Yeah, he died for everybody. He died for his elect's sake first. So let's go into, uh, this is the judgments. Like I said, there's a checklist. People, people say, like I said, I talk about things that I don't think. Let's talk about in detail. No, they talk about, I'm talking about this is in detail. Like I said, I do this because I love my brethren, right? This is for brethren. 
Save people can save people be edified of this. Well, maybe I mean, if it's to show that hey, this guy is really into it, he really knows the Bible. Yeah, but this is no doubt. This is for brethren because I love love the bread unbred the non brethren too. But my brothers are both. My brothers in Christ, Eric Phelps, Lawson, Ken Owen. They are above my fleshly friend because they have the world. Be not of the world, no, not the world, because the Father is not in him. Uh, so we're going to go and talk about the 12 judgments here. Like I said, I got bookmarks and bookmarks in my Bible. If you don't, if you have a Bible app, you don't have no bookmarks, no notes. And I severely doubt you're a Berean like me. Berean means, did, like, he's obsessed with the Bible like he tears tears it apart like a dog with, with a stake what does this mean what does this mean he looks it up what does this word mean uh, he has bookmarks everywhere notes everywhere so I'm going to talk about the uh, judgments here I don't know as far as what you get I don't know if it's crown I'm just saying reward so the Bible says reward but crown you will get a crown remember I said you're a king you saved your three things you're a prophet you say things before they happen, because the Bible says things will happen. Your Bible is your final authority. Your your uh, Jesus Christ was a prophet. Whatever Jesus Christ is, you're you're Christ-like, but you're not Jesus Christ. You're Christ-like. You're a prophet. You're a priest. You're someone of authority. Once you speak, you're not timid. You you believe what you say. You say what you mean. You're a priest. Well, Jesus Christ is the high priest of Melchizedek. You're you're a priest. He's a high priest. Remember, I said you're Christ-like, not Christ. No the difference. And uh, you're you're a king, because oh, I'm not a king. Why, why doesn't you, who is a crown? A king. You're not the king. Jesus Christ is the king of king, Lord of lords. But you're a king, and I believe when it says meek shall inherit the earth. Remember, I told you I believe in a literal millennial kingdom. Uh, if I'm on good par in wars and I'm good in my Christian walk, I firmly see myself ruling a part of this earthly kingdom after it's reconstructed. And I told you everything is vibrational energy. When God, just by thinking or saying, reconstructs this 13th floor is a good reason. Another movie I told you about C13 floor, 13th floor matrix and exception. Only those people that see that knows what those movies retell and I'm saying. When he reconstructs, re reforms this world, it, it this world's gone and millennial kingdoms here. I feel I'll be ruling as a king. My my Christ is gonna give me a partition. To king rule, why, why, if you, why would you give you a crown if you're not a king? So, let's talk about the judgments here. Uh, what you get for uh, uh, being uh, being strong in your Christian rock now. Remember, the rewards you can earn, that means you can lose. You lose what you earn. That's why you don't earn salvation, so you can't lose it. I'm not, I'm, I'm not an Armenian. When I'm once saved, always saved. I, I don't... There's a guy in Bible, I hate to call him out, but there's a guy in Bible flop box that's, that's uh, probably who would ever know his Bible father I'm talking about. Polish guy, he said he was a drug dealer, now he's dealing for God. He's, he's Armenians. Don't believe once saved and always saved. And he, he takes it further by using heresy, using scripture. I shouldn't have to make a video of eternal salvation, but because of him, I think I have to, just because of him. But yeah, he's an Armenian, so that's Armenian trash, garbage. I don't think, no, you're not saved. You believe in armies, I don't think you're saved. That is salvation based. I don't think you're saved. He, he uh, is, it's either, he, when the scripture he uses, he uses, uh, it's, it's funny, that scripture he uses fits in what I'm talking about. He uses as a scripture, is, the, the, the branches that do not bear fruit will be plucked off and turned to fire. Uh, that's not losing salvation. That's what he used. I didn't say that. That's what he uses. That is, if you don't perform fruit, that, that could be, I think that means two things. This is, again, uh, not not knowing this belief. I, I believe that means two things. I believe if you do not bear fruit, you're fruitless. Man, this is save people. God will take your works done in the flesh and burn the fire. It's either that or sin unto death. I don't hear not a lot of people talking about sin unto death. Sin unto death can only happen with believers. So all you people saying you can't backslide or whatever, explain to me sin unto death. I'd probably make a video on that. Sin unto death is only happens with believers. That's when they 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 don't yield to the Holy Ghost. They don't die to themselves. They live in the flesh and they 
turn to back to the old wicked ways. They basically they turn into the path they were before they met Christ. That happens to believers. It's called sin unto death. That is biblical. God takes you over. I think you do that. I think you lose all your rewards. Like I said, you can lose your rewards. I think you lose your rewards. Sin unto death and suicide. Your rewards gone. Catholics believe you commit suicide, you go to hell. That's wrong. No. Once saved, always saved. Nothing shall pluck him from my father's hand. I'm sealed to the day of redemption. How can you serve God with that mentality? That's like a mother of five working for some guy and saying, yeah, I might pay you from time to time. But you're not going to give it your all. Or give it, I know it's support. Or not, I'm talking about principle. You're not going to give it your all, all your heart. If you don't know, you're going to get paid. But Arminianists, once saved, always saved. That's what they go by. So, yeah, I think that's a sin, probably send them to death because someone that God does a sin unto death is fruitless. He saved. Those are for saved people. If you're not biblically sound, I'm not saying you're not saved if you don't believe that, but I'm looking at you funny. Sin unto death. Pastor Lawson preaches this. All guys uh, look up Pastor Lawson, praise God, as a brother in Christ. He preaches this. Eric Phelps, Kent Hoven. The, uh, my elders, like the Bible says, you're uh, remember I told you there's ranks within brother in Christ they're not gods over me but they are in a an authority where I should listen absolutely they've been doing this longer than me absolutely they're the elders okay uh, I'm not talking about elders in the Bible I think the elders by there I'm talking they're the seasoned vets remember I told you this is an army body Christ army well they're the generals people like Eric Phelps Ken Hovind Lawson and they all you know Sin to death is uh, it's biblically and it's for a believer. So don't tell me you cannot backslide that you was never one service. There's people that can backslide and they were one service. That, that God says, okay, he can't do nothing. He can't put out fruit. I'm going to snatch this branch because we're a branch. Do you know, me, me pull down into not scientific fact. Do you know, why does God say talk about fruit and branches and all that? Do you know your vascular system looks like a tree? I'm talking about your nerves, your vascular system. You know that? Just a thought. Uh, your, your body is a uh, living proof. Uh, your you created by creator. That's for the unbeliever. Any unbeliever watching this. Uh, so, uh, yeah, sin, sin unto death. I don't know how I went into that, but that is important because not a lot of people talk about that. Because by here, people go, oh, you know, you can't backslide. You backslide, you're not saved. And careful what you talk about. You better hope you're, you're right. Are there some people that was not with us? Yeah, I call them the uh, test drive Christians. They take everything for a test drive. They, But, uh, they, they go to church, they do the motions. It's not for me. I call them the test drive Christians and the U turn Christian. Uh, it's getting difficult. I know I'm five months of this, and nah, I can't do this. You make a U turn. I call them the U turn Christians. Yeah, those are not never saved. I'm not going to save because two trials are fire. If, if, if I have to tell someone, first of all, I shouldn't have to prove to you I'm saved. Prove to you I'm saved. Uh, uh, all that matters is God knows I'm saved. It does, I don't have to prove to you I'm saved. You should know by my fruits. By your fruits, you should know them. But uh, once all the fact that I, I, I know I'm saved, it's the trials of fire. Like I said, you don't know how many times I wanted to commit suicide. This is after salvation, not before. I'm not saying people want to commit suicide before salvation. They do. But I'm talking seriously. This this thing about suicide this isn't actually doing it, planning it out. Remember, as a man thinks in his heart, not your mind. It's your heart. Heart goes to the mind, not mind to heart. As a man thinketh in his heart, sure is he. Where your heart is, is where your treasure is. I, in my heart, want to commit suicide. Okay? Before I say, no. I'm not doing it. You know why? They want to go to hell because I knew it was a hell. Even in safe condition, <laughs> there was a hell, scientifically. That's why I didn't want to kill myself. No thanks. I know this is God. I know this is saying, let me, let me, let me uh, do, do my homework here and uh, get saved. And I did. That was last year. And then even now, after say it's overdrive. Like I said, devil keeps coming at you. It's through trials of fire. Trials of fire. How can you how can your faith be tried if you don't have none? You have to have faith to be tried. And faith is a gift from God, not from you. You don't want to believe. He gives you faith to believe. I think I'll do tulip Calvinism. Can't even talk. Next video. But uh yeah, he gives you the faith to believe. Faith is a fruit of spirit, not for you. Uh faith, faith is a fruit of spirit. So I think if you feel your faith is tried and there's a battle of the flesh, two people going on you, flesh and soul, 
daily battle. Remember, there's a battle in you, and there's you against the world. Battle and war simultaneously. You against the devil and his demons and his war system. But it's also internal war. Battle. That's daily. That's why you got to die to yourself daily. Dying to yourself is denying yourself, getting crucified in the flesh of Christ. Okay? Uh, so, yeah, we're going to talk about judgments here. If it can be earned, it can be loosed. Anyone says it can be loosed, that means you earned it. You can't say one without the other. Or you work salvation, Mennonites, Amish, they believe in work salvation, work salvation. You can believe in Jesus Christ, believe he's the son of God, and still not be saved. You guys know that? That's not good enough. You need to fully know what he did for you is sufficient. You don't need to add or take apart. Well, there's Mennonites, they believe in Jesus Christ, okay, son of God. But uh, we also believe, you know, uh, helping them out, participatory salvation, which Roman Catholics believe. That's Roman Catholic trash. I don't want to offend you, you Roman Catholic. I said I was eight year Catholic. Going to eight years, not only eight year Catholic, eight year Catholic, going to eight years in Catholic school. Junior high and high school, St. Peter's in Baldwin and Don Bosco, which is closed down. I wonder why. In Tremont, downtown. So I know the doctrine. I can fit right in with a Catholic church. I can fit right in with Muslims' church. I know the doctrine. Right in. They won't know. Okay. And. Same goes the other way. Devil, cat people, no Christian doctrine. Devil likes to mingle his children with God's children. Children of the night, children of the day. But uh, by ye fruits to show them, they, they have to reveal themselves. Uh, we're going to go ahead and talk about uh, judgments here. Let's go to my bookmark list. Like I said, uh, saved by the, the trials of fire. I mean, if you're faith is tested. The, the, the devil doesn't, uh, there's a quote by Jonathan Edwards, uh, the, the, the devil doesn't test and, uh, I don't know if I have a little hose, doesn't, uh, test and, uh, torment his, uh, people. That's his unsaved. Why would he do that? He torments the saints. Like I said, when you're unsaved, the devil does not, he leaves you alone. He puts a demon there, whatever your demon a tribute to whatever idol you like. You like girls, that's a devil demon for girls. Like rap, like I used to. Got one for that. Football, whatever. It leaves you to your own selves. And depending on how God has patience, mercy, you either fashion your heart, harden your heart for vessels of wrath fitted for destruction, or he'll draw you to his son. Either way, that's on you. Uh, yeah, he comes after believers hard. So, that's a good test. This is for people that are questioning there. Because remember, you have to have your helmet of salvation. I don't hear that talked about a lot. Yeah, they talk about sword of spirit, but don't get me wrong. The sword of spirit is important. That's the Bible. But the most important armor, don't you think that's the helmet? Go ahead and play football without a helmet. Helmet of salvation is the assurance that you know you're saved. The helmet can get weak and it can be penetrable. How? Don't use the Holy Ghost. There was times I was saying, no. Nah, Devil's pointing these thoughts at my saves. Those flaming arrows will come in right below. The Bible says that underneath your helmet. God does not want you to fully trust Him if you can't fully trust Him in your salvation. So, yeah, it's through, you know, all, all the. Thank, praise God, I didn't suicide attempt, but like I said, I planned it out. Planned it out, it's ha I'm halfway there. Don't tell me there's not Christians that are. Saved, born again Christian that I haven't planned out this. Who's okay? I'm doing this, 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 this. Yeah, that was not gonna leave you alone because you're saved. I used to think that. Come full force. Everything I means the whole army. That's right. At the moment you're saved. That's like I, I'd say February 8, 2015. February 9th, they're coming. Send them in. Gotta neutralize them. Can't have this guy doing this video like he's doing now. Send them in. The devil knows you're saved. Okay. If he if he didn't, he wouldn't come after you. Uh, let's talk about uh, judgments here. Judgments, judgments, judgments. Said earlier I'll be watching some football, but no, nah, I need to speak speak on Calvinism. Anything controversial, I mean, I'm all about controversy. Christians shall be all about controversy. Okay. I don't. I don't want to be 
everybody agree with me. No, no, Christian should not like that. Christian should not be comfortable in his walk like that. He he needs uh, resistance. He needs uh, negativity. He needs people questioning him. That's how. How does a sword sharpen? Friction, resistance. You know that? How do they sharpen a sword? Res uh, resistance, friction it has to go the other way. I need that. I need correction, conviction from the Holy Ghost or from brethren out there. I don't want, to, like I say, if I feel you agree with everything I say, uh, something wrong. Uh, Mark Twain says, if I'm on the side of the majority, I need to pause and reflect. Now, uh, these guys was not accepted by the ma majority. Most the majority hated him. That's why they killed him. So we're gonna talk about uh, from here on. I'm talking about uh, twelve judgments. Let's talk about the important souls we win, which is what I'm doing right now. That's the specific purpose. Purpose, like I said, even though this is primarily for the brethren, make no mistake. If I can convert one, just one uh, non-believer to at least get on the the path of Christ, praise God. But yeah, it's edification, edification for my uh, brethren. But the first one, Proverbs 11:30. This is how God judges you. Remember, it's a checklist. The Bibles are basic instructions before you leave Earth. That's what Bible stands. I'm not saying that's what it stands for, but I heard that in a song. I mean, it sounds right. But it's a big. One thing is a big coincidence. That's what it spells out. If it's an acronym, Bible, basic instructions before leaving Earth. Huh? Just the same. Uh, it's what it is, instruction manual. It's not proof that God exists. God doesn't need no Bible to prove he exists. God doesn't need no Bible to say his son really exists. I already proved that in the in the video. The Bible is for you to obey him. To understand who he is and get to know his son. That's what the Bible's for. Oh, it's, obedience, it's an obedience manual. So first judgment, God judges you upon your works. How many souls will you win? The fruit of the righteous is the tree of life. He that wins the souls is wise. When souls, I mean, that, that's really, it's the, to me, that's a real reason you have to be a Christian. Like I said, you need to think like Christ, act like Christ. I said earlier, well, why was he sent for, to earth? Teacher, prophet, yeah, he was all those. What, what was really the, the core root, the primary reason? When souls. When souls to him. That's the most important one. I think there's degrees of rewards for the degrees of things you do. I think you get a, Really big reward. I mean, sold you in that. I'd be grateful if I just get one. I know people probably getting dozens. And like I said, I'm not envious. That just makes you. It needs to burn a fire you to 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 want to do it for you. That that shouldn't be the case. You should want to do it anyways. But I'm just saying, you you're supposed to praise your brother. Just like your family member, he gets a job. That's what the Bible says. Uh, don't be envious. You're supposed to pray your family like your your father gets. Really, anyone. Not even your brother. Someone gets a job, you supposed to act. That's what the Bible says. That's biblically. You supposed to act like you got the job. And I don't got a job. I employ. But when someone is, I'm happy for them. Happy. Praise God. Okay? And praise God to the brethren out there winning souls. Uh, I just hope <laughs> you're lucky to, uh, I, you know, hopefully win, win, win one soul. But I want to win as many. Don't don't put a limit. There's, Chris Lasala in his ministry said that don't compare yourself to other people. He's right. Smack dab on that. Compare yourself to Christ because there's no limit. Christ is limitless. So, God willing, I hope this ministry goes to a church because this is, I'm talking about building chapel. This is not because I'm in Orlando. This is all hypocrisyville. This is where Benny Hinn started and Kenneth Copeland and all that. So, I already told you I can't find a church. I've been to eight. Eight. Four visited eight of four visited the site. Eight can't find a church. I'm not gonna compromise yourself like some say Christians probably do. I gotta go to church. No, 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 it's mandatory. So I gotta go to church. God knows in my desire for fellowship, that's good enough. If I go to church knowing that it's a church of sin, I have sinned. Do not yoke with unbelievers. I have sinned. So I actually sinned by going to church because it's the church of the devil. I said, God is time. He'll give me a church when it's ready. Cause I didn't have to church. I'm not baptized, but of course I don't believe you baptized. Go to heaven, like the church of Christ, because that's the work. I've been baptized the Holy Ghost. I believe in spiritual baptism, not water baptism, to get your salvation. Water baptism is a red ring that says you're saved. 
It's an announcement to the world. I'm not going to... I was about to do that. I was about to pick this church here. And the YC, YMCA right here. And uh, Conroy. I forgot where it was. Uh, they got no crosses around here. It looks like they're... Seems like they're saved. No, no crosses, no steeples, no Masonic symbols, no IHS Jesuitical symbols. And he says, go to your Bibles and I read the Bible. It's not coinciding. I have a site that pulls out the Bible. Well, he's on the English Standard Version. Mm -mm. Uh, another one, a guy called him Reverend. Mm -mm. Another one, another NIV Bible. Crosses everywhere. Presbyterian Church. Apostasy. End times. Falling away means end times. Apostasy. Uh, another one, uh, he had his wife uh, congregate. Another one, he's preaching his uh, tree. I'm not saying blank tree, because that's Lord's name in vain, I believe. December 25th, you know, a pagan tree. Right next to him, while he's preaching. These are YouTube videos. I'm not making stuff. I wish I would. For those that haven't found a church, do not compromise. I don't care. You're sinning if you do. I might have to make a video just on churches. Uh... You, you're, you're really saying if you do, do not yoke with unbelievers when you go to church. It has a cross, but it's, it's okay. No, it, here's my checklist. No, it, this can be, it's not 100%. This can be open to interpretation. You can add or take away from this. Uh, first thing the need, church needs to be King James. King James, King James, King James. Uh, probably have to make a Documentary. About, there was already a documentary about uh, what is that guy named? Sean Anderson. He's a pre post trip of course. I don't agree with that. Am I saying he's not saved? No, because he uh, he edified me with his documentary. Listen how heretical these Bibles had. There's literally thousands of verses missing. NIV is the worst. NIV Bible is the worst. Verses missing. Uh, day of the Christ to day of the Lord, and I find out those are different. People say, you know, those are not the same. What? If one word makes that makes a difference, uh, how much verses me? It's King James. Devil knew this. That's why he had Guy Fox try to blow up the parliament. Don't have King James uh, read the Bible. God said, I don't think so. And he stopped him. And he burned, hung him with a burn and sick. That's what Vim for Vedetta about. But he's a hero. He's a, Vim for Vedetta is a hero. Of course, like I said, Jesuits run to Hollywood. They got a. The, uh, the devil praises uh, iniquity and demonizes righteousness. Why God does the opposite. Uh, yeah, things to look for at church. Let's be quick. No Bibles, no cross, steeples, IHS symbols, Masonic symbols. Bible, uh, the, the, guy, the, the preacher, minister, pastor, deacon, not father, and not reverend, like Reverend Martin Luther King. Uh, I'll make one on him. Easy. You think he is <laughs> what you think he is? I told you the devil's cunning. Oh, yeah, you know about Hitler. Hitler's obvious. You think the devil's going to make it easy on you with all these people here, these false prophets? There's a book out there. King, was he a false prophet? Yes, he was. Uh, I'll go ahead and talk about him and Malcolm X, probably. But next video is going to be Calvinism. Uh, Bible, here's the things we look for at church. King James, no crosses, no symbols, IHS. Pretty sure better not be calling himself father. Call no man father. Matthew, call, call your. Here's my point with the legalists. It says, call no man father. So I shouldn't call my biological father father. Here's why I say you need to have common sense when you read the Bible. That's my proof idea. No, common sense, don't call the, the guy that's uh, preaching father. And what we do, we call priest father. Reverence, holy is his name. No reverence. Reverence everywhere here. I'm in Orlando, by the way. Home of Benny Hinn, Kenneth Copeland. That's why I can't find a church. Uh, pray for me that I find a church. I'll pray for myself if I find a church. But pray for me. Make my, if you want something done, you got to do something yourself. I'll probably make my own home church. So I get back on my feet financially. Oh, Lord willing. Like I said, church is the body of Christ. You don't go to church if everybody's not saved. You go to chapel. All these here are the chapel. There's no church here. There's no one saved here. Uh, so... Number one is a cross, the symbols, reverend. No women. There's, I already have been to one that he let his wife talk in church. When there must be signs in church. Praise God, there's no women preachers <laughs> have to come in. But she said something about, you know, praise God. No, you're supposed to be quiet. 
go ahead and sing in the crowd. Go ahead. Be silenced in church. Subject, subjection. I talked about that in Chain of Command at Women's Place. Not to teach a biblical doctor. You teach your kids. Don't teach me biblical doctor. Joyce Myers is female preachers everywhere. Jezebel's. Uh, <clears throat> crosses, no symbols, no reverence, women. Uh, preaching that what they actually preach. Well, it's very simple. Don't pray about talk about money. I was watching. Uh, this is how naive. Remember, when, when you're saved, you're naive. You're like a little kid. Yeah, but Christ says, "Be shrewd as uh, snakes, gentle as doves." That day I wasn't because I actually thought, "Hey, I think I found a church," and he was on TV. That's the big no. I don't think so. No, it's no church that no church that does the service on TV. Say. It was, uh, like I said, I'm going to be calling out names. Pastor U2, U2H, First Baptist, Orlando. This is how his ministry went. This is not a lie. I can't make this up. 20 minutes of so singing and praising and celebrating Christ. Like I said, he's celebrating Christ, not worshiping. You're on equal footing with him. 20 minutes of that. It's a Christian concert. And he starts off with saying, yeah, we raised a lot of money. We raised like $300,000. That's how he started off. Money. Other than that, if they, they preach the word of God, yeah. But let me tell you what, what to look at as far as preaching. Look up Charles Lawson, definitely YouTube. See how he preach. He has a cross. Yeah, I see that. He has a cross there. I think he's still saved. Uh, he said himself, everybody's a hypocrite and everybody's ignorant. No kidding. But uh, yeah, I believe he's saved. Like I said, uh, I, the only one you're supposed to know is say, don't say, you do this and not say, I don't believe. You say beliefs, don't say, I don't. I, I, you can say certain things say I know you're say, but you don't know the hearts of man. Only God does. God knows. I'm saying I don't have to prove to you, regardless of my salvation. What I say should be enough. All the evidence is if the Holy Ghost convicts you. But uh, Pastor Lawson, yeah, I believe he's saved by by his fruits. Fire, brimstone, bit. Never heard him talk about money. The only problem I have is with the cross. Uh, he doesn't talk about Jesus that much, but he's not. This is preaching. This is not history. So that's not the platform to be talking about it. Okay, he shouldn't be talking about Illuminati. Preaching is conviction. That's what preaching is to me. It could be a lot of things, but it's conviction of your sin. It's confrontational, and he is confrontational. Pastor Lawson, I wish he was here in Orlando. I'll go to church, but he's in Tennessee. But then again, I probably won't go to church because he has crosses. Like I said, I'm not going to church with no cross. Pagan symbol is highly offensive. But like I said, I believe he, says he does confrontational preaching. He doesn't talk about money. No other symbols I know of. Um, I believe it's saved. It, 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 he's one of those Pentecost fire and brimstone teachers, preachers. Yeah, as far as preaching goes, that's what it is. Well, most of these are non confrontational preaching. Praise the God. Jesus is coming. Everything's fine. You're a good person. When you're totally depraved, I'm going to go to Cavaliers. Total depravity. I don't hear that a lot. I'm going to beat that horse to death. I'm here to beat horses to death. I'm going to be totally depraved to death. I'm going to push buttons. Okay, totally privately, simply put, you're evil. Saved or not saved, you're still evil. Your flesh is evil. I'm not talking about you or you as your soul. If you're not saved, you're deaf, you're all evil. You think you're saved, uh, you're not evil? No, you're evil. Your flesh is evil. If that's not a fact, it will be no sin unto death for believers. If that wasn't a fact, a scriptural fact. Why is it sin unto death? Well, sin unto death is non believers. No, sin unto death is to believers. If anyone wants to challenge you on that, I might have to do a video on that. Sin unto death is believers. So you're de depraved. You're totally depraved. Let's talk about these judgments in the next. I'll go into more detail in the next video. Uh, souls. Soul winning. Uh, this is not a judgment. This is very important. Matthew 5.17. This is something. Well, it is It is a you know, judgment. How how do you abide by God's word? You don't get a reward just if you're scripturally sound. You get a reward just for that. People say, is God fair? Mm, no, he's not fair. If he was fair, everybody would go to hell. He wouldn't be sent to hell. He didn't owe his grace to anyone. Fair is sending anyone to hell. God, You better hope God's not fair. Everyone's going to hell. He's not fair. He's generous, overly generous. He gave his only begotten son so you may have a second chance. When Adam sinned, we sinned because we was in the semen. Adam sinned, we sinned, we fall. That's it. I don't. God does not. I show compassion to. I show compassion. God does not hand his, the, the, owes anyone anything. Okay. God's not a face. He's above generosity. You get a reward just by abiding in His word. People saying, "I'm not doing works. Works as far as people. I might have to do one on works. Works is not. 
faith of how works is dead, but it, it, what do you mean by works? I'm going to go ahead and challenge your hermeneutic in the uh, connotation, how you use those words in your semantics. What do you mean by works? This is how the, the Bible means by works. Works is the way you yield to the Spirit. These fruits that the Spirit give, give to you, you use. Meekness. That's a work. You learning. That's a work. I, I, I'm just saying this because I used to thought works is uh, preaching, going, going out going in the world, preaching like 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 they do, the street preach. I thought those were only works to see how lost I was. No. God God says you get get uh, good works is charity. You know, it's charity just by saying thank you and hello. How many people say that? Thank you, hello, you're welcome. That's a work. Don't tell me it isn't. You're in sin. That's a work. Okay? If you're telling me Works are the grand big things. Well, it sounds like you want to justify your salvation. God does not care how big the work is or how little is what is like this little thing is. Careless. It's a gift of God. That means you cannot earn, you cannot justify it. A lot of guys get puffed up with self righteousness. So I'm definitely saying, look at what I'm doing. You should feel like, not say that. You should say, yeah, I'm definitely getting a lot of awards. That should be. But you're boasting the Lord because it's through Him. Boasting is okay as long as it's of the Lord. So, yeah, Matthew 5, 17, deal with the legalists, those people that are very Pharisees that are saying, Jesus says, I didn't come to destroy law to fulfill it. We're not under the law. We're not legalistic. I know I'm stirring off the point here, but, uh, yeah, you be the Bible literally, but the Bible is not rules, it's guidelines. So it's in the same thing. No, it's not. Remember I told you the devil likes to mix words together? mean the same thing Christian is the same thing as Catholic abortion plan birth control and murder are the same things uh, abortion and uh, birth control same thing uh, it, it's it's, uh, it's not the same thing rules and guidelines aren't the same thing guidelines is what you abide by rules is you if you don't do them you're done Bible warns the letter killeth you live the spirit of the law. The letter killeth. That's in Corinthians. So watch out for those legalistic people there. Those are the Pharisees. They go by the rules. They follow the Bible. They do their rules. They do their, their confessionals. They go to church. Give them justification to sin. That's all it does. How you treat other believers. So I know I'm getting a reward of this because I just said my believers are my family. I love them all my family that I'm here with now. They're my brother in Christ. I uh, talk to Eric Phelps by email. I donate what I can to his ministry. He's a brother in Christ. One of the main reasons why I be led to Christ. But like I said, he's, he didn't uh, get me saved. No one can get you saved. Only Christ can get you saved. But people can give you the message. But after that, it's up to you and God. Salvation is a personal relationship with Christ. You get a your judge on how you treat other believers. Matthew 10, 4, 1. This is rewards again. What, how God judges you by or He that receiveth a prophet in the name of the, the prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. And he that receiveth a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. The righteous man is the believer. How you treat your believers? Do you really treat the brethren like they're really your family? They're really uh, your you really treat them like you used to treat your biological family. That's how you see them. If you don't, you're not in your Christian walk. I do see them like that. If I knew someone a believer, I'll, 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 I'll give them money. I'll do what I can, even though I have none. I'll give. That's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to give, 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 give. For, not not to a, a homeless person that's going to use it for, for gas. Yeah, you give them a little and you evangelize. But brethren, yes. You know, they, you, know you give $10 to a brethren. Chances are he's not going to buy a cigarette. I hope not. He's going to use it for food or what he asked for. So you get a reward how to treat other believers. I'm going to try to bang, uh, bang. Go through this quickly. Uh, your, uh, how you control your sinful nature. Your sinful nature, a lot of people say, uh, confuse sinful nature with de demon possession. Like, you say if you can have demons in you. No, you can't have demons in you. Okay, no, you can't. You have the Holy Ghost in you. It's it's pure light, pure light, pure darkness cannot exist. So if you're saying you have a, your demon 
you have a demon. Am I saying demon possessed? Demon in you. Well, well, do you know when you say you have a demon in you, you are demon possessed because demon possession is demon inwardly, not only. Don't confuse you being possessed by demon with your sinful flesh, which is demonic, but it's not a demon. A believer can be demon oppressed. Demon oppressed and possessed are two different things. I'm talking from outwardly, from sinning, demonized, outwardly. Cannot, uh, got questions out or bangs that, uh, sorry for using that word, uh, explains that perfectly. Can a person, and he uses scripture, uh, can a Christian be demon possessed? Absolutely not. Not, and I mean no demon in you. Like I said, be careful what you say. Uh, people, to me, when you say demon in me, is demon possessed. There's no demons in me now. In me, no. All around this house, absolutely. All these Catholic idols here. Have I been demon possessed? Absolutely. Torment. That's from outwardly. Inwardly is your sinful flesh. What's inwardly? The lust. 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 Yeah, you can get lust. Don't get me wrong from outside. Lust is generated in the flesh. Inwardly. That's biblical. Pride is inwardly. No, those demons. Demon possession. No, no, no. There's no demons in me. Nothing like that. It's it's flesh. Don't confuse your sinful nature with a demon. It's demonic, but it's not a demon. Big difference. I say I'm gonna try to explain this as clearly as possible. You have the Holy Ghost in you. Uh, how can the Holy Ghost? Yeah, Holy Ghost is already contending with your sinful nature. Now you're saying you got demons in you. Now it's gonna contend with that. No, I don't think so. That's light. And you're not saved to begin with. That's darkness in you. We turn on the light of the room. It's either light or dark. It's either light or not. I mean, turn on the light switch. Light has to come on. And darkness got to dissipate. There's light in this room. There's no darkness. That's, that's how the inside of you looks like. It's all light. No dark. Now, it has a sinful nature, yeah, which is serves the world. But that's not a demon. You don't, if you de it's demon oppression from outside. Now, straight off course, I mean, yeah, I saw that in a in the ministry. I thought I'd uh, point that out there. Uh, yeah, how you treat your sinful nature. You let not sin reign in your body, in your mortal body. You should obey it in the lust thereof. Dead to sin. Re sin does not reign no anymore. Uh, once you're in your Christ, you're you're dead to sin and alive to Christ. You're a living sacrifice. If you sin, it's willingly. Uh, I also hear people saying that if you. Willfully sin, you know, I say, I do not agree with that because, again, sin unto death. Don't tell me someone that sins unto death backslid is ignorantly singing back this way. No, they know what they're doing. That's another thing. Oh, you willfully sin, you're not saying, no. No. Sin unto death directly uh, disputes that. David, when he sinned with Bathsheba, that was ignorance. I think he know what he was doing. He was saved. I don't know if he was saved at that point, but he was saved at the end. I, I think he was saved there with Bathsheba. With the, uh, you you can sing willfully after being saved, but just know God will chase you. The difference is, the difference is where I'm going with being saved is you lose the lust for it. You masturbate. It does not feel like it ought to feel no more. The sensation is gone. So I don't do it now. It's a waste of time. Sex magic. Before, I loved it. I feel it. It's gone now. You lose the lust for sin. It does not rain no more. You sin, you sin willfully. And don't say to me, Christians out there, believers, non believers, that, oh, you're not saved. If that was the case. And explain to me, sin unto death. Sin unto death, which I don't hear. Coincidentally, you know, uh, very uh, conveniently, I don't hear that talked about. Sin unto death has to do with believers. Okay. So uh, there's going to be a sinner on a believer. He does not ignorantly sin and go back to his way. He knows what he's doing. You have free will. Free will means you know what you're doing. That's why, oh yeah, you, you still sin, but you sin ignorantly. No, I, I, I think you, you probably tell me a heretic, uh, go ahead, but uh, save people, I think they sin more willfully than ignorantly. Your ignorance should be gone. There's no excuse. Unsaved people are ignorant. Sin is ignorance. You know, sin, it's ignorance itself is sin, period. Like I said, if you have no crosses in your room, no crosses in your room. And I tell you, crosses said to sin, but you didn't know that. You know you already sinned. You didn't do nothing. You didn't know. Ignorance itself is sin. The whole point of being saved is being aware. Oh, God. That's why God lets you remember your past sin. I can't believe I'm saying nine, nine. No, you, you, you sin willfully. It's, it's willfully. Okay, I'll, let's add it together. It's willful ignorance. 
But this, 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 don't tell me it's a, uh, it's, it's all ignorance. It's part will, it's part ignorance. You let that thought go in your mind. The, the, you have to know your body has a mind of its own. It really does. There's two, two parts of you, sinful nature and your soul. Don't tell me there's no two parts. They're warring. If they don't war in you, you're definitely not safe. Okay, so, I guess I would say you can willfully ignorantly sin. Willfully ignorant. Like, uh, it's willful ignorance. It's, it's, it, don't tell me there's no such thing. There is. Okay? You, because you let, you, you willfully let that thought in, but when that thought takes hold and it goes to heart, bye bye. Then that's ignorant. The flesh takes over. See what I'm talking about? I uh, lost that girl on TV. I didn't sin. I was tempted. I, I, I willfully did not change the channel. Generates in the heart. Ten minutes later, I'm asking ignorance. So don't tell me well, there's no such thing as willful ignorance. I just proved it to you right there. Willfully, willfully ignorant sin. But I don't. You you lose the the, the lust for sin, in general. Okay? Because don't tell me you can't will sin and be sin unto death. Explain to me sin unto death. Uh, sin unto death is me going back to my own ways. No, I know what I'm doing. I'm not choosing to walk Christ. know what I'm doing. Going back to my own ways. I can't use this to man. He's a branch that does not bear fruit. Toss him in the fire. No, not lose salvation. Not like he was never saved in the first place. Sin unto death. Sin unto the devil to destroy him. That's what that means. There ain't no one talking about sin unto death. Um... So yeah, I'll, I'll 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 go meet you halfway. You can willfully uh, be in willful ignorant sin. Don't tell me there's two ways because sin and righteousness begin in here. They both begin in here. That's one thing they have in common. Don't tell me they're both. They don't begin in here. They originate in the heart. That's the will. If you let the thought enter, but after that, the flesh says, "Okay, thanks for that thought," and it goes in. And you you're unaware. I'll give you that. You're ignorant, unaware. Sinful flesh is. If, if nothing dwells good in the flesh, that's even after salvation. People think after salvation you have no sinful nature. No, no. no. You're evil before and after. Don't give me that. Why you need to die daily to yourself? That's the case. Why you need to renew your mind daily? Yeah. Sinful flesh has been cured. It's been sanctified. If that's the case. In the Bible, doesn't, the God doesn't need uh, Christ doesn't need to give you a resurrection body when He comes in the blessed hope. You're, he has no sinful flesh no more. He's purified. I'm not talking about sinless perfection. I'm talking about your sinful nature. It's gone. It's not gone. It's not going over. You don't know how it's going to be gone when you're dead or you get you get caught up in the rapture. Uh, blessed hope. The sinful nature is going away. It's not a demon. It's demonic because it serves the world. It's not a demon. A uh, Christian believer cannot have a demon in him. Well, that's not what I mean. The demon possession. In him, possessions from within, not without. Can be demon oppressed, demon oppressed all the time. Now demon oppressed here does not mess with my computer like it did before. But yeah, because there's, there's idols everywhere. Dead demon attracted to idols. Not in my room. I'm talking about in my parents' room because they're Catholics. They atheist Catholics. There's crosses everywhere. Think they're leaving? I don't think so. But they're not. not that's the far as I tell. It's not in my room here. But uh, yeah, let's go on the other one. There's another good one. Romans eight eighteen. You get a reward. Based on how much you suffer for Jesus Christ, you're supposed to endure hardness for Christ's sake. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. So you get a reward. I need to hurry up because it's getting long here. So you get one for that. You get one for you. You press on steadfastly. You keep the faith. 1 Corinthians 9 25. That means you, you, your, your faith is strong. That's on faith is going to be strong for trials, fire. You don't go to trials or fire. Oh, this this Christian life is pretty simple. You're not safe. Test drive Christian. How effectively we control the sin nature. Again, not a demon. It's demonic. It's not a demon. You get a war. How you control that? How you employed our gifts. Well, this is my gift right here. I'm employed well through this ministry. How we spend our money. 2 Corinthians 9 6, do you know you get a reward and how you spend your money? That's what the Bible says. I'm not going to read all this. 2 Corinthians 9 6 for that. Uh, good works, I'm talking about good works, I'm not talking about evil works, are performed by the Spirit. I told you, I know about this. Well, bef well after I'm saved, but I choose now to do that. that that's because 
I respected God's time. He didn't want me to do it immediately. You have a lot of these Christians, you're saved, get on the world, go and do no, 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 no. I don't follow your timetable. I follow God's eternal timetable. His, remember, he's beyond time. He's not under time like me. Okay? It's so when the Holy Ghost moved me. The Holy Ghost moved me now. All this stuff I learned is five months ago. You know that good works are performed by the Spirit, not the flesh. You can do good works by the flesh. You know what? I already told you what a good work by the flesh is. Me forced into um, go to church. When I know it's, uh, it's, it's cross, but let me go to church. I need, I need to get baptized. You're doing it just for the sake of doing it. That's what flesh is. Doing it just for the sake of doing it. Thinking you please God. You're not going to please God. You have to do it in the Spirit. How you spend our time. Redeeming the time because the devils are evil. How you spend our time. Say, hey, if you're listening to this and me doing this, I say we're both doing good. Remember, you can go anyway, anytime. God can kill you like that. But we're taught to be so immortal, so physical. You know, we're not going to die. Even believers have this. I'd be, no, nah, God's not going to kill me. I'm going to be here till 80 years old. No, you die tomorrow. Redeem the time well while you're doing this. How we abide by God's word. I told you you get a reward for that. What the rapture meant to us. It means nothing to you if you think you're mid-trip, if you're mid-trip or post-trip. It means nothing to you. You get a reward. You get two awards. You two awards for expecting this period and another award for, for what the blessed hope means for you. It means everything. It's a reason it's it's a reason to go in overdrive to, to, to hate sin more. I mean there's a degrees of hating sin. It makes you hate sin even more. Because the Bible taught you to hate sin, not dislike it. And blessed hope through purification, sanctification makes you hate hate sin. You don't want to sin. Ignorant, I don't care, willful ignorance, ignorant, not ignorant, anytime. Sin is sin, with, uh, yeah, there's different degrees of sin, but ultimately sin is sin. You need to know that. So, how you react to temptation. Do you, you lust, when you see that woman in lust, uh, how far does that go? Do you stop right there, or you let it take hold on you? How we exercise our authority. How we exercise authority. Do you talk down to people? You sound condescending, because, yeah, you're an authority, but do you talk like a drill sergeant? You, get better, blah, 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 blah. you get a reward for that. Your humbleness, your humility. How humble are you? I say I'm very humble. 35 years old, living in my mother's house with nothing. Absolutely nothing. No house, no nothing. Still praising God, not mad at God, not questioning God. I know he'll give me everything in due time. So humbleness, which is the opposite of pride. So that's it. I'm going to be talking about Calvinism next. Uh, hyper point Calvinism. Uh... Be well. I can do all things to Christ who strengthen me. Peace.